Next to the Jordan 3, the Jordan 5 is probably my favorite Jordan sneaker. I love the look, I love the heritage, I love the story, I love the feel of wearing the shoe. That's the reason why when the Jordan 35 was announced, I really wanted to get it because it kind of paid homage to the 5 and it kind of takes it to the next level by using the latest technology that's available uh, from Nike and Jordan brand. And in today's episode, we are going to unbox that shoe, check it out, take a closer look and see if it's worth buying or not. Let's go. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure that you do so. We have a bunch of ongoing giveaways ranging from laptops to smartphones to shoes. The links to all the giveaways can be found down below. But the prerequisite for anything is for you to subscribe. So hit that subscribe button, smash that notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Now, just like the Jordan 34, the 33, the 35 has a really nice box. So if you take a look at it, you have three X's over here. The shoe actually isn't in the box anymore because I've been wearing it. So let me just get it so that I can show it to you. So this, ba-bam, is the Jordan 35, the latest and greatest sneaker of Jordan brand. And like what I mentioned earlier, it pays homage to the Jordan five and we will start with that the first and most obvious thing is the tongue it kind of resembles the shape of the tongue of the Jordan 5 that's the first thing that I immediately noticed uh, this one though is way thinner kind of still padded but not as thick and fat as the Jordan 5's tongue the second thing that I noticed is here at the back the shape that that curve over here reminds me a lot of the Jordan 5 as well and then if you take a look at this material over here near the toe box which stretches throughout the tongue that's the same material or design that you would usually find on the side panels of the Jordan 5. And lastly there's some sort of like hidden message because here along the Eclipse Plate 2.0 which we'll talk about in a bit there's Braille and this actually means 1990 and 2020. 1990 is the year the Jordan 5 came out 2020 is the year the Jordan 35 came out. By the way, talking of small details, if you take a look at the inside of the tongue on the right shoe, it actually says over here 84 to 03, which are the years that Michael Jordan played in the NBA. Now, apart from the homage to the Jordan 5, this shoe is also a tour de force when it comes to the technology and innovation that Jordan brand can offer to basketball players. One of the first features that they put into the shoe is a more secure and firm lockdown and foot containment. They did this with the lacing system that you see over here. Good thing that they dropped the lacing system of the Jordan 34. That was just, uh, I didn't like that at all. Uh, but apart from that, you also have the Eclipse Plate 2.0, which you see over here. The Eclipse Plate 2.0 works with the AirPods, Zoom AirPods over here at the heel and the forefoot to give you the responsiveness that you need to play on court. It also supports lateral movement because as you can see, it actually rides a bit higher. So it actually arcs upwards. It's not just like this. So that if you move to the side, be it left or right, it should give you the support that you need so that your feet won't cave in or roll over. I almost forgot, speaking of containment, you see the fly wires over here along the side of the shoe, both on the lateral and the medial side. They help as well with locking down your foot when it is in them. Even the padding on how they did here at the ankle, there are different levels and different dimensions. Uh, the upper part is a little bit thick then it kind of caves in that's the reason why it's like that is because it firmly sets uh, the lower part of your ankle down towards the bottom of the shoe so you can really see the design thinking that was put into the sneaker to make this the ultimate basketball sneaker in comparison of course to off-white Virgil Abloh's Jordan 5 which is all about aesthetic and design and streetwear just wanted to show the difference in thinking between two designers speaking of aesthetic the only thing that I don't like is that the visible AirPods here along the middle over here is not that good looking at all it, it kind of looks roughly done 
I'm not sure if that's a QA issue with mine or this is how they really intended it to look like. But it kind of spills over and you, you actually see it through the hole. And I don't like the look. But but that's a you know nitpicking and not really a, a major issue that would cause you to not recommend it to people. But but yeah, you have zoom AirPods here at the heel as well as the forefoot to give you better cushioning and that spring to your step. Now, how is this sneaker on feet? Like what I mentioned earlier, two things. Actually, just two things that you need to know. Number one, it's foot containment and lockdown. It is. It will really keep your feet in uh, the shoes. So if you are playing basketball, this is one of the best sneakers I think that you can pick up. If you want a performance review, guys, a link down below to Marches, a Filipino sneaker YouTuber who does amazing basketball sneaker reviews. Make sure to give his channel a subscribe as well. And the second thing I love about it is the springiness and the that you get especially the heel part you really do feel the zoom airpods now i do have to say though as somebody who has wide and flat feet uh this sne this sneaker really isn't for me uh there's a tendency for my feet to kind of spill over on the medial side primarily because if you take a look at the midfoot it's kind of narrow versus your other more i don't know like wider sneakers i guess ultimately for people who have wide feet obviously logic dictates that you find shoes that are a little bit wider right in the same way that when you look for like pegasus 37 sneakers on the nike website or nine or new balance 990 v5s you actually can select like the wide version versus the normal version so just take that into consideration if you have wide and flat feet like me so it's a nice shoe it's a great selection i bought it for the review but chances are i won't be keeping it primarily because it doesn't fit it doesn't uh, suit and match the structure of my feet but i can totally understand why this is an amazing buy for people who love playing basketball especially those who have normal or narrow feet. For those who are looking for more hype alternatives, uh, the great news is that Jordan 35 does have a collaboration with Fragment coming soon. It's a little bit more on the minimalist side, not as loud and popping as this particular colorway. So if you are a fan of Fragment design, uh, that should be coming soon. Uh, reminds me of the Jordan 3 Fragment that we have over here that I also did the review on. So this one looks really nice. It's kind of polarizing, not a lot of people like it. Well, I think it's half-half. People who like minimalist love it. People who feel that it's kind of boring will really see that it's bland, but yeah, I, I like it. I, I love the design. Uh, the link to the review, by the way, of this one can be found down below. But, but there is a Jordan 35 fragment coming out. I will post a picture somewhere here. Let me know what you guys think about it. Or is that something that you would want to cop or is that something that's an automatic drop for you? Hit the comments. Let me know what you think. Also, let me know what you guys think of the Jordan 35 based on what I showed you today. Is this something that interests you? Is this something that you would want to buy? Hit the comments. Go. With that said, that wraps up our unboxing of the latest and greatest sneaker from Jordan Brand. This is Carlos signing out. As usual, guys, I hope you had a great weekend. Peace. God bless. What's up? Boom.